Welcome everyone to this Let's Play of Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2, also known as Loud and Clear. Now in today's episode, I thought I would make a few bits and pieces that we will need for our adventures in the next few episodes. And to start with, I'm going to make myself a small uh, command bay, because at the moment we don't have the large command cores, these probe cores, we only have these little ones. Uh, so I thought we could look at making uh, some command bays. Let's have a look at the science bay. This is the uh, which one? This is the smaller science bay. This is the larger one. So let's get the larger one because we're using uh, the large bay on the uh, larger craft quite often. So we've got this rather tiny uh, little probe core in here, but we've got this rather nice space that we can now use to put. Uh, various batteries. So let's go and have a look at the batteries. This is the largest battery we've got. So let's put uh, a couple of those in there. Uh, we'll probably also need uh, one or more antenna. So let us place uh, one of those uh, rigid Communitron 16S antennas uh, against one of the batteries. Let's put that in there like so. I've also got the editor extensions uh, put in which means we can now center these parts against whichever part they're in just with a quick press of the uh, V key. So let's also put in one of these Communitron S. Now these will break uh, if exposed so we can put one inside the bay and then extend it if we need. We'll have to open the doors first to do that. Um, and what about a control wheel? Can we put a control wheel? Um, no, not, an, not a communitron antenna. These are under here. Uh, inline stabilizers. That will actually fit inside and underneath that tiny probe core. So that's good. Uh, we could cram some science in here, but we don't really need any science. But we could put our various pieces of electrical equipment. So there's our uh, KOS unit, Compo Max Radial Tubeless, uh, and we could also put in, what else we need? We could also put in from the science section our Kerbal Engineering System. Uh, this will just make sure that uh, this little sort of probe core uh, really is uh, a master of everything. So uh, that should be okay for the insides of this uh, probe uh, core. Um, what I'm going to do is close up the bay for the moment because I'm going to put some panels on the outside. So let's look at panels. We've got these large panels but I think they're too big. We could uh, was it rotate them. Why can't I never find the rotate that I need? But that kind of I know it's not quite centered, but somehow it just looks kind of wrong. So let's go for the smaller panels. We'll just go for these uh, standard can't do without panels. Can I get two of them on? Helps if I actually have two radial symmetry and get a second one below. Oop. There we go. So that's two panels not quite symmetrically placed. Move that up again. There we go. So that's those two panel. Oh! <laughs> oh dear. Uh, let's try. Um, Ah, I wonder. Oh no, I thought it might have been dipping inside. So let's try that again. Is that? There we go. No, not sure what happened there, but we are okay now. So that gives us a little bit of charging ability. Uh, and that will probably do us for this um, command bay. So what we're going to do now um, is. Hmm. Yeah, that will probably do. So what I'm going to do now is make a sub-assembly out of this. We go to our sub-assemblies section, 
grab hold of, I say grab hold of the root part, but let's change the root part to this outside section. So we now actually grabbed the bay itself. Uh, so that'll make it a lot easier to move around. So let's just close that up, grab the science bay, drop it on the subassembly zone, and we'll call this the 2.5 meter, um, uh, what do we call it, command, whoops, 2.5 meter command bay. So let's save that. So that's going to be our sort of larger probe core, a bit over-engineered perhaps, but we don't have the larger probes right now. So that'll have to do, but that will save us some build in the near future until we get those larger probe cores. But there was something else I wanted to build, so let's go to new. We won't save that, we've got that now as a sub-assembly. Uh, something else I wanted to build, which was something for Michael O. Kerman, something he reminded me of, uh, and that is our station. It doesn't have a lot of RCS, so uh, Kerbal Space Command had this concept of uh, worker bees. Uh, so uh, why don't we build one of those? So what I'm going to do now uh, is look for uh, the claw. There we go, the claw. We can't start with the advanced grabbing unit. Uh, so let's start with something else. Let's start with this uh, probe core itself. Go and find the claw again. And you can see it's substantially larger. Now we could use, we could perhaps use a smaller command pod, but I've got a better idea. Instead of using a command bay, a small command bay, I'm going to do something a little more interesting. So let's go to structural, uh, and then I'm going to get, I don't think it's that one, I'm going to get the other one. There we go, this one, which is the smaller of the two adapters. Put that there, put another one here, and now I'm going to create a little sort of bay, sort of out of struts. Uh, so let's go and get our struts. And you'll see how this is going to work a little bit uh, later. Uh, so where do we go? Let's get a few more around the sides. That's five. Let's go for six, because that will match the number of sides we have on our pod. Oh, sorry, our probe. Let's go and squeeze that in there like so. That gives us a little bit of a cage. Um, can I get these struts? No, nope, I can't get these struts to line up any more accurately. Just this little sort of, I don't know, bend in the strut there. But never mind, uh, never mind. Uh, that's going to be covered up in a little bit. So next I'm going to get us, what do we have next? Let's have a, have a look. We need, uh, we need something to get this thing around. Let's go and get a small fuel tank. That'll be more than enough. And then we'll have a look at what's the smallest little sort of engine. I rather like these little little engines. Which reminds me, perhaps we shall go for a different tank. This calls for some of these round toroidal engines because you can put this little spark up inside them and doesn't look quite right. Uh, we need something to place in here. We can put a fuel tank, RCS fuel tank, and then place this on the base, maybe. Still doesn't look quite right. Something wrong with it. What else could we try? We could go for maybe a little wheel. <laughs> it's a bit too small. Uh, let's go for the larger one. Get rid of that one first and then fit this underneath. Not bad, not bad. Let's try, I know there's a little bit of overkill, and we will require a little bit of clipping, uh, is if we turn this over and then base that on there. Actually, actually that probably looks, looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Gives us something to uh, mount some of our RCS blocks to, which reminds me we now need some RCS. So let's go and get RCS fuels. So we've got these little round tanks. And what I was going to do, um, and we've got six R here, so we can cram them into these 
gaps. That doesn't look quite right. Maybe we do it this way. So instead of trying to fit them onto the actual... Can we fit them on the corners? I wonder if we go down using... Uh, there we go. Editor extension enhancement. We can actually fit ourselves onto the corners. And then I think we can use the V key to position them centrally. And then use the move tool. That doesn't look central. Hmm. Has it moved it off to one side? Okay, let us move this. Is that better? That looks better. Okay, let's go and use our V key. That will just center them. And then I'm going to use the move tool just to push them in. Go on, in you go, like so. So that gives us a sort of a sort of a look of um, <laughs> not sure what it gives us a look of, but um, yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. But we don't have any battery charge, so let's get some batteries in here. So go to the electrical section. Um, and get ourselves a battery. I might reposition the battery if we need to move RCS blocks around. Uh, so that will be quite important. Right, okay. And we'll need some panels as well. Um, we won't use the extendable panels because if this is going to be used as a little sort of tug, uh, then perhaps um, that won't look quite right. Hmm doesn't look quite right does it let's see does that fit so that's sort of a six yeah let's have a look move that up a little bit so it's not clipping into here um, maybe we'll come back to those let's come back to those after we fitted our RCS so let's there we go let's have a look at our translation ability using here we go using our thruster blocks we're just going to stick uh, four thruster blocks on so let's go down to four and you can see that massive uh, red circle there which suggests we would be uh, spinning quite violently uh, if we were to position them there and I don't think moving this up to here is going to make a great deal of difference so this is where I suggested we might reposition Batteries. Let's take that out of the way. Plump that uh, there. Take this off the top, and then this will give us somewhere to. Oh no, just one. Uh, that is just one, isn't it? Hopefully, that's just one. Um, that will give us somewhere to uh, place our thruster blocks. There we go. So we are now going to be rotating heavily in this direction. So that didn't really help. <laughs> So which way? Um, they, still, they still need to come somewhat inward. So we, we're so balanced. Why don't I? Because this, you see, if this was to mount here somewhere, we'd be absolutely perfect. Okay. So, so what can I do? So these need to go either much further down. So why don't we have a look? Let's just try this. Let us put, let us put just for spacing's sake, another battery under here. So that's still going to give us what half a kilons, kilo, kilons, half a kilonewton of rotation. Hmm. And that's quite a lot. I know we still do have this wheel. Okay. I wasn't going to do this. This is getting... And place that back. That's 0.3 of a kilonewton. Hmm. Okay. Let's try uh, taking this to pieces and putting this on the top. How is that going to look? I'll just put a few of these pieces back. Take that off. Take that off. And we've still got quite a rotation. 
But if we bring this up to here, 1.3 down to here, 0.5 just needs to go up a little, doesn't it? I wonder. Nah, that would be cheating. <laughs> Hiding the RCS blocks uh, directly underneath um, directly underneath the um, RCS tanks. That would be cheating. Hmm. And I'm making the, yes, I'm making the, there's no way we can squeeze these right in. See that's not actually making it any better. Best we can do is 0.4 and can I do that? And I can probably do that without that. So what we could do is we could go with this as our worker craft and hope <laughs> hope and pray that um, hmm, hope and pray that this will um, this will work. So let us, we've got plenty of space up here at the top now so we can go to electricals and get our panels and put our panels here. There we go. So we've got panels. We've got RCS. Um, ooh, ooh, that, ooh, that, um, hmm. Yeah, the only way we've got of docking this is actually by grabbing something. We haven't actually got the opportunity to dock it. Not so much of a problem. These are only intended to hmm, be disposable little workers uh, to position our various pieces of our satellite. So let's just go and um, so this, this is worker uh, mark one. There we go. Let's save that. And so what I think we should do is a bit of a bonus uh, for this episode is just go and see if we can send this up to our uh, space station and to see if it actually works. So I'm going to build myself a little, uh, a little asparagus launcher and then we'll get cracking. See you in a moment. Well I've managed to get our little worker bee here into orbit and uh, we have quite a close encounter. 800 meters in uh, 110 seconds. Uh, we're going at 51 meters per second relative to the target. We're also on the sunny side of Kerbin. I don't know how long that's going to last. Uh, as usual, we could end up uh, docking in the dark. Uh, so we've got uh, about um, 90 seconds still to go. So I'm just going to get ourselves on target. It's a bit, uh, a bit twitchy because we do have quite a lot of control in that control wheel. Uh, but that's fine. So let's just get ourselves on target by herding the yellow marker onto our pink retrograde marker. So about a hundred seconds to go. So we've got plenty of time and we've got uh, a pretty good amount of thrust in here. We're 3.4 kilometers away. So let's use time acceleration just to close that gap. So a hundred meters to go in about 60 seconds. Just drifting off to one side, that's fine. Getting into 600 meters to go, so let's just get ourselves into position to slow down. There we go. Slowing down, you can see the station and that large orange tank there on the base. There we go, and 9.8 meters per second. So let's just slow that down and come to a stop just by the station. There we go. Now we've got no particular way of docking. 
uh, because we have no docking port, but we do have the uh, advanced grabbing unit. So let's arm the advanced grabbing unit and basically just go down and grab, uh, grab on here to the orange tank. Uh, so let's get our RCS on and use the RCS keys here just to, uh, let's have a look, let's just go and turn ourselves around. Whoa, jeez. Yes, it is a bit, um, a bit twitchy. So get ourselves going back. <laughs> uh, which way are we? I think we may be upside down as far as the controls are concerned, but never mind. Can't really use the, uh, I don't think we can use, because we can't target anything on here to use uh, to use Navy fishing docking alignment indicator. So we are just going to have to do this a little bit blind. So let's just slow down our descent and then let, use a little H to get us going forward. There we go. You can see our little yellow marker now. Oh, too fast. Slow down. 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.3. and just get ourselves going down a little bit. So we are gonna to have to do this by eye. And we need to be going across a little and back some. I know we're still a little bit away, but I want to um, I don't want to overdo it. So let's go. Oh, we are now going slightly away. There we go. Oh, wrong way. Yeah, I think we're upside down as far as the controls are concerned, but uh, never mind. Drifting gently across. <laughs> we are going to go in the dark, aren't we? We need to come down a little. There we go. Coming down below the ring of parachutes. And now I think we are lined up and good to go. Slightly misaligned, but I think we should be fine. up get that there we go excellent uh, so we've now punctured <laughs> we've now punctured a rather large hole in the side of our orange tank just as just as luck would have it it goes dark <laughs> <laughs> but we did manage it. Uh, so what I'm going to do uh, is we can now use this little sort of worker bee here to manoeuvre different parts of the station around. So uh, the lack of RCS isn't going to be so much of a... Oops! Oh, oh, oh. Now there's uh, something that we all need to remember, uh, which is to deactivate our engines. <laughs> yes, uh, so we gave uh, Jeb a little bit of a shock there. So let's uh, shut down that engine as well. So all our engines are now safely shut down. Oh dear. Right, well, uh, despite uh, giving uh, Jeb a little bit of a shock there, uh, we are now on the dark side of Kerbin, but we did successfully launch and attach our little worker bee. So with that said, I'd like you to thank you for watching this rather bits and pieces of an episode. I'd like to wish you all a happy new year and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care. Bye bye.